So now we spoke previously that the use of AI is important in maybe creating the first draft for resume, but we also know that a lot of resumes are being blocked by applicant tracking system because we tell our clients or the students we're helping use the keywords, use accomplishments, but that are important. In your expertise, how can a good resume can overcome ATS? Yeah, I think the, the most important thing, and I think we often forget this as job seekers, is that the, um, the job posting, that job description that the employer has put online is, has probably all the answers of, of what they're, they're looking for or yeah. close to it, right? Um, so I think one of the easiest, most useful things that we could do as job seekers is go to that job posting and make sure that we're using like the exact same words mm. in our resume that match that uh, match that posting, right? Because you you know it's it's a matching system. So yes. even if my words are off slightly, mm -hmm. you know I'm maybe not going to get through. Um, I'm, I'm maybe not going to get through the process. So yeah. I would really counsel to to really review review your your job description really really closely and match up your resume whenever um, whenever possible. Yeah. I also think that the applicant tracking systems. Um, a kind of the the impact and use of them can really vary across uh, across different organizations and different types of positions that we're looking for. So, for example, for a frontline role where a recruiter is faced with hundreds of applications, yeah. yes. it just makes it makes so much sense, right? It gets that first um, that first screening out, and if the role is a transactional role, presumably those um, those bits of experiences are easier to detect right but yeah. as we progress in our careers right it's kind of it's like the, the funnel where yeah. where of course you know the more senior positions are we're probably going to be um be receiving less applicants yeah. and rely on some more um expertise from people in terms of in terms of the screening so i know people will tend to get really nervous and amped up about these applicant tracking systems and afraid of them in a sense yeah. Um, and they're problematic for a, a bunch of different reasons, but we can really start to overcome them by, I think, first of all, understanding, um, understanding their role in our own application process. And if, if we are looking for an executive level role, I think that's going to have less impact. Those tracking systems are going to have less impact on our candidacy. But if you are someone who's looking for that first frontline position, I think it's going to be hugely important that you study that job description very, very closely. Yeah. You might even consider using, um, have you heard the, these third-party tools yes. like JobScan that can actually help to make sure that you're um, that you're you know um, going to appear favorably favorably through an applicant tracking system mm. to do that um, to do that quality check. Mm. I think like I think recruiters um, it's like a necessary tool in in some cases, mm. but I, I think like recruiters and HR folks will kind of get a bad reputation for relying on them too heavily, right? Because it can be really unfair it can we can be screening out highly qualified candidates based on really little things that don't matter there can be inherent bias in how yeah. we set up those tracking systems to screen people out they're problematic but the reality is i think they're probably here to stay for yeah. for quite a while as long as volume recruitments can yeah. exist and because and there are also as you mentioned there are some software that you can upload the job description and it, it can tell mm. you what are the keywords and use them. And we know recruiters might have six to seven seconds just to scan your resume. And especially they, they emphasize the first part, the qualification, your recent uh, uh, job, and then, okay, they have it and then they go. But is there any rule it says it has to be two pages, three pages? And I've heard that recently people are saying that if you have 70% of the requirements, you can apply. Is that mm. in your, what's your what's your opinion about that? There's 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 uh, there's been some studies around that which which are interesting. So so um and and it's gendered too, right? Like so, typically a female won't apply to a job unless um unless she met, meets I think it's like over eighty percent of the qualifications. Yeah. Whereas a, a man will be comfortable applying if they if and they 60%. meet. Yeah, like, like so. I heard, there's, I heard, yeah. So there's some behavioral stuff in there that probably needs to change. Um, really, when it comes to a rule of thumb, I, I don't know if we can assign like 
a specific percentage to, you know, if I meet 70% of the bullet points, I can apply. I, I don't know if I'd so much assign a percentage to it as to rather just say to the job seeker, like literally use your judgment. If you're an mm -hmm. HR practitioner and you're applying to a role for a senior engineer, that makes quite literally no sense. So your job as a job seeker is to make sure that you're applying to roles that are going to leverage your skill set or are aligned with your desired career path. It, it becomes admittedly really kind mm -hmm. of challenging to articulate that on a resume and a cover letter and land the interview when you don't meet those qualifications. But I would say if you're looking at a job ad and I'm looking at a job ad in marketing, but I have HR experience, I have a lot of transferable skills. And I can make a compelling case for why I'm a good candidate for the mm -hmm. role. And on top of that, the position is something I'm like excited about. I would be like mm -hmm. totally pumped to work for this employer. Mm -hmm. I would say go for it and kind of throw those rules of thumb out the window. Um, but I, I do think um, I do think we need to stop self screening ourselves out and saying like, well, I'm not qualified. Mm -hmm. But we still need to be like reasonable about um, yeah. about the, the positions we're applying for. What about we know that we tell clients or students, you know, follow the company on LinkedIn, try to find someone in the previous job, in same jobs, maybe do informative interviews with them to know because there's a referral program available in companies. But do you recommend uh, job seekers to reach to the recruiters or hiring managers via LinkedIn message? You know, I'm very much interested. This is what I can bring. I've applied. We know that they are busy. They would say apply to our website. But do you think that proactive approach appreciated it all depends or it depends i think it's i think it's completely appreciate like i even think of kind of some of my own experiences like i, I teach in um at, at the university of new brunswick in an mba program and i'll from time to time have students reach out even before they land in my classroom and they say you know I'm, i look forward to meeting you in effective communication class this coming term or whatever and so few students do that, that the ones that do, I will tend to remember, remember. Them. like, like, yeah. right. So, uh, so say out of a, a cohort, if, if a term, I have a hundred students and maybe, maybe five, maybe five students will mm -hmm. do something like that. Yeah. I will have a tendency to remember it. So I, 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 I'm personalizing it because based on my experience, I know that it matters, yes. but I can't give you a specific like study or a piece of data that yeah. supports that. But, I, but if you think about it, um, it, it makes a lot of good sense because these yeah. folks are standing out. I think that, um, I think it's, I think it's really hard, really, really hard to do this effectively for, uh, for job seekers, particularly if it's like I've applied 200 other people have applied and now I'm sending a cold message on LinkedIn. Um, I think that it's too optimistic to send a cold message to someone on LinkedIn who doesn't know you and yeah. you know you don't have a relationship with and to hear back from that I, I do I, I think I think it's like I think it's much more complicated than that in order to get some sort of um, some sort of result mm -hmm. so I, I think what we need to focus on instead of sending a message like hey I'm Sean I applied for uh, applied for this job if we make it more about the hiring manager and like hey I'm Sean I applied for this job and I saw that you did this really cool yeah, all thing about about, yeah like and get get it focused on them and instead of going like right for like that first yeah. message, like hire me, get me a job. Yeah. Don't do that. Just like take yeah. the moment to build the relationship and see if you can get a reply. Yeah. Um, and the worst case scenario is, is you don't. I think there are going to be cases um, depending on the type of position um, and the company and so on where, you know, there, there will be those rare cases where just simply nobody does it. And simply by virtue of the fact that you have sent a message you stand out as a candidate, like I've had that experience with, yeah. with some of my students. Um, but I don't think it's the norm. And I don't think that it's going to be enough a lot, a lot of the time. The other thing I think that people don't do, um, but they could do, which would serve them well, is, is to really, if you have a hiring manager that, um, that you've located, a hiring manager for mm -hmm. a position you've applied to, you go check out their LinkedIn and say you learn this hiring manager is actually active on LinkedIn, don't stop there. Like engage on this hiring manager's content, mm -hmm. leave, co right? Because because yeah. I don't know about you, but like all, there's certain people kind of in my community that I, again, I just know because I feel like, oh, this is someone who's a super quarter. They clearly share mm -hmm. the same values. They engage on my content. And it helps the person who's posting the content simply by 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 leaving a comment. A like is awesome, that's great yeah. too, but it doesn't give you the visibility no. of a comment, right?
Yeah. Those are great tips, Shana. Thank you very much. Again, for the audience watching or listening, if you have any more tips in terms of resume, you can leave them below. And tune in next time for another great question with Shona.